Hello viewers, welcome to another interesting episode on Healthline TV show. Today we are going to discuss a topic related to women who are not in their reproductive age. Ideally, women are not supposed to see blood during their menopausal period. But as to why certain group of women do can only be explained by our guests for today. Welcome to Healthline TV show with Miss Stella, your host and your midwife. This show is proudly sponsored by Milo, MNC Global, Nido, Prince Syrup, Life Boy and Vaseline. Milo says breakfast is the most important meal of the day. If you skip breakfast, your body will run out of glycogen by the middle of the morning, which means reduce energy burst. When this happens, your body is like a car that runs out of gas. So that is the reason why you need to breakfast your day every day. Milo gives you the nourishment of malt, milk and cocoa, and the delicious taste of Milo to help you breakfast your day. Milo contains micronutrients that helps with energy release, normal muscle function, and maintenance of normal bones during child's physical activities. Breakfast your day with Milo to help give your child the right start for the day. With Milo, every child can be an MVP. With Milo, every child is a champion. Milo, the energy food drink of future champions. In this COVID era, Lifebuoy has made hand washing moments happier moments for many families. With the introduction of Lifebuoy liquid hand wash, you now have a friend that can help you wash gems off your hand. Indeed, Lifebuoy liquid hand wash brings you two variants, Total and Herbal, labeled red and green respectively. Its active silver ingredient gives you superior protection against all gems and yet dental on all skins. Lifebuoy liquid hand wash is super for all hand washing moments. Choose Lifebuoy for 10 times gems protection. Available in all markets, supermarkets, pharmacies and the neighborhood shop near you. Let's go for a breather. When you come back, we'll start our discussion on postmenopausal bleeding. Welcome back. So I have with me Dr. Joseph Corte, a specialist in obstetrics and gynecology. He works at the University of Ghana Medical Center, specifically Women and Children Department. Doctor, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Great. Before we dive into today's topic, what is menopause? All right. So it's, it's a very important question. Um, so we say menopause is the cessation. In fact, it comes from two Greek words. Okay. Men, which is month and pauses, which means uh, cessation. So okay. literally, menopause means cessation of the month. Okay. But the definition is cessation of menstrual bleeding because the ovary has lost its activity. So, I mean, normally women, unlike men, have, um, they have predetermined number of eggs, which we call follicles, before they are born. For instance, when, at the, at the time of birth, you have about two, uh, one to two million eggs and then whilst we get to reproductive age group it reduces to about 200 to 300,000 eggs by the time you hit about 50 years mm -hmm. it's um, about 1 million okay. so normally um, um, menses occurs because the ovary in the presence of all the eggs within it okay. is able to secrete certain substances that makes the woman that brings about um, um, menses so once the number of eggs depletes to insignificant levels, mm -hmm. you cease to bleed. So that causes uh, menopause. So meaning it's specifically related to menstrual bleeding? Yes. Right. So, Doc, what are some of the signs of menopause? All right. The, the first sign that we all know is the cessation of the menstrual bleeding. Okay. You will not have your, your um, monthly bleeding as you used to have in a reproductive years. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, like I, I've already said, the whole thing about the menses is because you are producing, your, your ovary is producing a certain hormone called estrogen. That makes the woman, even between you, the, the woman, you have your form, your everything, is because you are producing a certain hormone in significant amounts called estrogen that the man is not. Mm -hmm. So once the estrogen level gets insignificant during menopause, it brings about an array of problems or array of things that we, we, we are going to talk about. So the first one, you have um, um, hot flashes. So the hot flashes, most women will feel intense heat for about one to 10 minutes. It can go to about an hour, but largely it will not go beyond one hour. And then also the, um, the, the, the vagina loses its elasticity mm -hmm. and becomes dry. So people, dream in the, the people in their menstrual 
ages will not enjoy sex will have painful penetration. Okay. And apart from that, during your menopausal uh, years, you will have uh, thinning of the um, of the vagina itself. Mm -hmm. So because of that, it could lead to bleeding and all that. Mm -hmm. People of the, uh, of um, menopausal ages also have sleep disturbances. It's also very significant for people to note. They may also have um, 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 mood changes and then forgetfulness. So when you see all these things happening, then you know that you have entered into a menopause. Right. So, Doc, how common is postmenopausal bleeding? Well, you know, once you enter into menopause, we, as, we don't expect it to bleed. Okay. So, if I might define postmenopausal bleeding as bleeding one year after menses, we want, okay. in, in, we want to give an allowance for. Um, something we call perimenopausal, uh, perimenopausal bleeding, I'll explain uh, later. So, we don't expect that a woman who has entered into menopause will bleed. So, if a woman goes, gets to menopause and goes one year completely with, um, and bleeds after one year, okay. then we say that a woman has, uh, 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 has post-menopausal bleeding. Okay. It, is, it is not so common. Mm -hmm. Generally, about 20 to 30 percent of uh, menopausal women will experience a bleeding of uh, one bleeding of a sort uh, for instance in the uk about 13 out of thousand women population okay. by 50 years will experience bleeding mm -hmm. and then in sweden it's about 13.6 out of thousand um, um population of women so it's not very very common but what about in ghana well we, you know we, we don't have statistics um, okay we don't have it's very difficult to come by such statistics in our book, so okay. yeah, we don't have such figures. Okay. Doc, I believe someone may be asking the menopausal age. What's, what is the menopausal age range? Well, so in Ghana, uh -huh. the average age of menopause is about 48 years. Okay. Even though some may um, enter into an early menopause wow. before 48, some may um, go a little bit beyond 48 years. Okay. But averagely in Ghana, women enter into menopause by 48 years. All right, Doc. So what contributes to the early menopause? Menopause itself is, we have, is divided into natural menopause and mm -hmm. surgical menopause. Mm -hmm. So I've explained what I explained initially was how, is how um, menopause occurs naturally. Mm -hmm. So natural, naturally, your eggs, well, which we call follicles, would deplete naturally and then okay. enter into menopause. But okay. we have one called surgical menopause. Mm -hmm. So there are times that we end, go into theater for certain procedures. For instance, we are going to remove a uterus mm -hmm. for any other procedure, uh, for any other reason, any reason. If we have a suspicion that these ovaries are suspicious, we remove them as well. So if, because all, the, all I've explained is that the ovary is what is making the difference between a fetal or a reproductive age woman and then a monopausal woman. Yeah. So once the ovaries are removed, mm -hmm. you enter into menopause. So such menopause is called surgical menopause. Okay. Apart from that, um, in conditions like cancer, where people are undergoing um, chemotherapy and especially radiotherapy, the ovaries are affected yeah. and the woman enters into a, 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 a pre-menopausal or, sorry, a, an early menopause. Okay, okay? So those are the, the two things that occur during um, I mean, in menopause. So, Doc, is early menopause reversible? Um, if, if the menopause is as a result of removal of the ovaries, uh -huh. it is not reversible. Okay. Once okay. you enter into menopause, not reversible, you can be helped. Mm -hmm. But you cannot, reverse, um, uh, you cannot reverse it once a woman enters into menopause. Okay, okay. So, Doc, is it normal for a woman in her menopausal age to see blood? There is a period that we call perimenopausal period. Okay. Perimenopausal period is a um, few years before you enter into a proper menopause. For instance, your, your uh, um, repeated or uh, cyclical men menstrual bleeding, monthly bleeding, is as a result of um, your ovulation, mm -hmm. expression, uh, or ovulating, and then your um, hormones. So, uh, be just before a woman enters into a proper menopause, there's a period where they can have um, uh, bleeding. Which may be, which is normal, because once in a while they may ovulate and have normal ovulation, so they can bleed. 
But once a woman enters into proper menopause, that is the reason why we've left, we've left some allowance. Mm -hmm. And we've given ourselves up a to year. a year. Okay. So once you cease to bleed, after one year, mm -hmm. we don't expect the woman to have any bleeding of any sort. Any bleeding after one year, when once you have entered menopause, is abnormal. All right, then. before we continue, viewers, you are watching Healthline TV show. This show is proudly sponsored by Milo, MNC Global, Nido, Prince Europe, Lifebuoy and Vaseline. In this COVID era, Lifebuoy has made hand washing moments happier moments for many families. With the introduction of Lifebuoy liquid hand wash, you now have a friend that can help you wash gems off your hands. Indeed, Lifebuoy liquid hand wash has two variants, Total and Herbal, labeled red and green respectively. Its active silver ingredient gives you superior protection against all gems and yet gentle on all skins. Lifebuoy liquid hand wash is super for all hand washing moments. Choose Lifebuoy for 10 times better protection. Available in all pharmacy shops, supermarkets and neighborhood shops near you. Nido says there's no love like the mother's love. No one can support them like you do. And now more than ever, it is important to protect our kids from anything that will make them sick. That is why Nido is fortified with iron and vitamin C and D to help support their immune. So choose good nutrition. Choose Nido. Nido, your love, their future. So doc, what causes postmenopausal bleeding? First of all, I want every woman to understand that mm -hmm. postmenopausal bleeding is abnormal. Okay. You know, the, 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 sometimes the uh, postmenopausal women or people who have entered into their menopausal ages think that they, they see a little blood mm -hmm. and then they think that, oh, this is little, so uh, it's nothing. This is the take-home message. Every woman that has entered into menopause, you are not supposed to bleed. The significance of the, of the problem is not the amount of bleeding. Okay. It could be small, it could be a lot. Mm -hmm. Whether small or, or profuse is significant. Okay. There are many causes of postmenopausal bleeding. Mm -hmm. But it is said that postmenopausal bleeding is a cancer unto proving otherwise. Because wow. as we health professionals, we want to always rule out and identify, find out if the woman has a sinister cause like cancer before any other thing come to play. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the commonest cause is the thickening of the womb, the lining of the womb. The lining of the womb is called endometrium. Okay. So a woman in its menopausal age may have increasing in the thickness of the lining. That will lead to some bleeding of the sort. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, Woman, women who are, you know, when they enter into menopause and they're having all those issues that I've talked, uh, spoken about, we try, we tend to help them by giving them estrogen because, like I said, the problem is the estrogen. So once you give them estrogen, a lot of their problems are solved. A woman who is on hormonal replacement therapy, like a estrogen, may experience some bleeding. Okay? Apart from that, all the cancers, so vaginal cancer, vulva cancer, endometrial cancer, cervical cancer, they all lead to endometrial and um, postmenopausal bleeding. Okay. I said earlier that women who have entered into a menopausal age may have or will have um, thinning of their vagina. We call it vaginal atrophy. The vagina is so thin, sometimes it's so thin that it leads to um, uh, bleeding. Okay. Then also, there is a particular medicine we use in um, um, breast cancer, mm -hmm. which we call tamoxifen. Mm -hmm. So if a woman is on tamoxifen, there is a likelihood that the woman will bleed. Okay. So these are the common causes. But I want you to, I want the, the uh, viewers to know that okay. the significance of the bleeding is not in the amounts, okay? And then once you have a bleeding, cancer is always one of the causes that we want to rule out before we look at any other thing. Interesting. Yeah. All right, Doc. So can someone get pregnant during menopause? <laughs> well, the, 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 the oldest woman who has ever gotten pregnant um, got pregnant at 57 years in Portland, in the United States. Okay. 57 years and I think 120 days. Okay. Eight, old. Okay. okay. If... If you are in the perimenopausal period, like I explained, around the menopausal period, once a while, you may ovulate. 
and then you 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 get pregnant. We see that a lot in our clinics. When you ovulate, are you going to see blood? When you ovulate, you not those women. Uh -huh. Um. Once a while, they are entering into menopause, okay. but just around those periods, they may ovulate, they may menstruate and ovulate. Mm -hmm. And once they ovulate, they can get pregnant. But once you enter into proper menopause, where you don't see blood after one year, you cannot, we cannot uh, get pregnant because you are not ovulating, you are not having any significant follicles to ovulate, so you can't get pregnant. But around the perimenopausal period, once a while, perimenopausal means that the significant, they are not bleeding for about two, three months. Then once a while they see some small bleeding, they are not bleeding, and then so once once they see uh, blood around that time, it means that they have ovulated, and when they have sex, they can they can get pregnant. But if you enter into proper menopause, um, you you cannot get pregnant except you do artificial uh, uh, reproductive technology. But to have a spontaneous natural um, um, a conception, no. Because I've been hearing some women saying I wasn't menstruating for six months and I menstruated once and I got pregnant afterwards. So they termed it, they termed it as uh, I got pregnant during menopause. So I wanted you to clarify that. Yes, yeah, so me. that's what I'm saying that mm -hmm. when they are not having their uh, they around the perimenopause, mm -hmm. period, once a while they can ovulate. Okay. Okay, once a while you can have an, a, a spontaneous ovulation mm -hmm. passes by and then when because most of the because they are not bleeding, they think that though I've entered into my menopause, yeah. age, I'm in, in menopause, so they forget about pregnancy. Okay. But once a while, around the perimenopausal period, they can ovulate and get pregnant. So are they able to carry that pregnancy to term? Oh yes, we don't encourage uh -huh. um, the elderly to get pregnant okay. because pregnancy in the elderly is very complicated. It has all the problems there. But of course, once they get pregnant, you can't do anything about it. Oh, okay. and, and they carry it to uh, uh, ten. Same. They can actually have normal pregnancy, but it's not free of problems. Okay, and do they give birth to healthy babies? Yes, they do. All right, though. Before we continue, viewers, you are watching HealthLink TV show. This show is proudly sponsored by Milo, MNC Global, Nido, Prince Syrup, Lifebuoy, and Vaseline. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. If you skip breakfast, your body will run out of glycogen by the middle of the morning which means reduced energy burst. When this happens, your body is like a car that runs out of gas. So that is the reason why you need to breakfast your day every day. Milo gives you the nourishment of malt, milk and cocoa, and the delicious taste of Milo to help you breakfast your day. Milo contains micronutrients that helps with energy release, normal muscle function, and maintenance of normal bones during child's physical activities. Breakfast your day with Milo to help give your child the right start for the day. With Milo, every child can be an MVP. With Milo, every child is a champion. Milo, the energy food drink of future champions. Let's go for a breather. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion. Welcome back. Before we went on break, we were discussing menopause, postmenopausal bleeding, and the causes of postmenopausal bleeding. So, Doc, uh, what should one do when she's experiencing postmenopausal bleeding? Very well. Um, so once you see blood, the first step is to come to the hospital. Okay. Um, usually when you come to the hospital, we'll take a history mm -hmm. because we need to find out what is causing the bleeding. Okay. So for instance, we'll ask you about the nature of the bleeding. Is it a lot? Is it small? Is it associated with low abdominal pain? Do you have a mass? Have you lost weight? Um, is it associated with uh, 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 sex, uh, sexual intercourse? If it comes after sexual intercourse. Okay. Then once we, we have an idea about what the problem is, we'll, have, we'll, we'll uh, examine the woman, okay. we'll do a thorough examination, we'll come to abdomen, we'll do a pelvic exams to see if there are masses. Typically, we'll use a, a, a plastic or speculum into the vagina so that we'll look at the cervix and see if there are problems in the cervix. If there are um, suspicious areas, we may take a biopsy or we'll do another test called corposcopy. But usually, we, um, it is not uncommon to see a, a doctor taking um, a biopsy or something, take a, taking a tissue from the endometrium because I said it's one of the commonest causes of... Endometrium is where? The womb, the lining of the womb. Oh, okay, okay. So we take a, a tissue from the lining of the womb mm -hmm. to take it to the lab and to find out if everything is fine with you. Okay. So the management will depend on what we find. Okay. So for instance, if it is 
uh, an endometrial cancer, then there are other things you do, take it to theater, and then the womb will be removed, and afterwards there are uh, follow-up treatments. Right. If it's a cervical cancer, it will depend on the stage of the cancer. So if it's an early stage, but if you are in the menopause, most likely we will we'll remove your uterus and all that. Okay. If it is as a result of the woman bleeding because the vagina is so, the lining of the vagina is so thin, mm -hmm. normally we give them estrogen. Estrogen cream. What is estrogen? Uh, it's a hormone. Okay. Like I said, that is produced from the ovary. All right. So once the ovary has lost its function, mm -hmm. you are not producing enough estrogen. Mm -hmm. And that can lead to a massively thinning of the um, vaginal lining. Okay. That lead, can lead to bleeding. So if that is the cause of the bleeding, we, uh, we, we manage with estrogen cream. We have a cream that is uh, it's an external estrogen that we apply in the, into the vagina to solve the problem. So a woman, like I said, do not think that the bleeding is so small, so yeah. it is okay. So please, I want to drum home this message again, that uh, no matter the amount of the bleeding, so far as you have entered into menopause, it's significant. It's not Quickly go, to stay at No, at all. Yeah. Quickly go and see your gynae for investigation to be done. All right, Doc. What advice do you have for a woman in their menopausal age? Okay, so first of all, I've, I've spoken a lot mm -hmm. about the significance of the bleeding, that when you are bleeding, first go to the hospital. Then also, in this part of our world, it is not common to see people coming to the hospital just for checkup. But I want to entreat and encourage every woman who has entered into a monopole that there are yearly things we do okay. during your monoposal age. So for instance, you do yearly breast screening, you do yearly mammogram to mm -hmm. see if there's any issue with your breast when you come to In hospital. In your facility? Everywhere. We okay. encourage women okay. who, um, who have entered into their menopausal age that mm -hmm. every year they need to go to the hospital mm -hmm. for their, to have their breasts checked. Okay. First, we'll examine the breasts, we'll do yearly mammogram. And then also, yearly, we need to look at their thyroid, thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is a gland that is found in front of our neck. That stimulates certain hormones for metabolism and other, other functions in the body. So yearly, we need to have our, they, they need to have their thyroid gland checked. And then also, when they come to the hospital, we need to examine, uh, do a pelvic exams mm -hmm. to find out if there are issues there. So once there are issues, then it's solved. Then um, yearly, when they come, Typically, we we'll do a speculum exams okay. to find out if there are issues with the um, the service, and then we no, encourage before them. Before you continue, you said speculum exam. Speculum. I, I believe a lot of people don't understand. So. Yes, I've explained <laughs> that it's a plastic okay. um, that we use in, in the vagina to open up, so we can look at the, uh, uh, examine the vagina and then the service. Right. So the yearly um, the yearly checkup includes the speculum exams to look at the service. And if they are, like I said, if they are suspicious area, we take a biopsy and take it to the lab. We take a tissue, a biopsy, we are taking a, a tissue from the service mm -hmm. to the lab so that an examination of the tissue will tell us whether the suspicious areas we need to act or is just fine. All right, Doc. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. I need to have another interview session with you again, Doc. Okay. Great. All right, viewers. So, so soon we've come to the end of the episode. If you have any question on postmenopausal bleeding, kindly drop it on the number showing you right on your screens. Join me same time next week for another interesting episode on HealthLink TV show. HealthLink, everything on health. There is no love like a mother's love. No one can protect them like you do. And now more than ever, it is important to protect our kids from anything that could make them sick. That is why Nido is fortified with iron and vitamin C and D to help support your immune. So choose good nutrition. Choose Nido. Nido, your love, their future. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. If you skip breakfast, your body will run out of glycogen by the middle of the morning, which means reduce energy burst, 
When this happens, your body is like a car that runs out of gas. So that is the reason you need to breakfast your day every day. Milo gives you the nourishment of malts, milk and cocoa and the delicious taste of Milo to help you breakfast your day. Milo contains micronutrients that helps with energy release, normal muscle function and maintenance of normal bones during a child's physical activities. Breakfast your day with Milo to help give your child the right start for the day. With Milo, every child can be an MVP. With Milo, every child is a champion. Milo, the energy food drink of future champions.